Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on simple classification of substances and you're going to be looking at separating mixtures. Initially we talked about uh, the separation of mixtures using sublimation, we used a magnet as well. So today we are going to dive into separation of solid liquid mixtures and especially for the solid liquid mixtures where the solid does not dissolve in the liquid. And then we are going to see different ways of separating this mixture, the um, different alternatives and the best alternative out of those alternatives. So let's begin. So we will start first by defining a few terms. So substances that dissolve in a liquid are usually referred to as soluble, while substances that do not dissolve, we call them insoluble. So there are some substances, if you put them in a liquid, they are going to dissolve. And then other substances, if you put them in a liquid, they're not going to dissolve. For example, if you put sand in water, it's not going to dissolve, so we will call it insoluble. If you put sugar in tea, for example, and then you start the solution, you notice that the sugar is going to dissolve in the tea, we shall refer to sugar as soluble. So when a substance dissolves in a, li in a liquid, the substance is usually called the solute. So in our example, so and then in the case of the example we were discussing on uh, the tea and the sugar. So the tea in this case will be the solvent and the sugar is going to be the solute. And when you mix these two, when you mix the tea and the sugar, you form a solution. If the solution is stirred, it forms an homogeneous mixture. This is in the situation where the solid dissolves in the liquid or in the solvent. So like in our tea and sugar situation, when the, tea is, uh, when the sugar is put in the tea and it is stirred, it's going to dissolve in the tea and it forms a solution. And this solution is referred to as homogeneous. But in our case today, we are going to be looking at solid liquid mixtures where the solid is not dissolving in the liquid or where the solute is insoluble in the solvent. So an example that we gave was sand and water. So our sand and water, if you stir the solution, it's not going to form an homogeneous mixture, it's going to form an heterogeneous mixture. So this is, so this is what we are discussing today. So uh, separation of insoluble solid liquid mixtures where the solid is not dissolving in the liquid. We usually separate this mixture by two methods. We use decantation and filtration. So we are going to look at each and every process in details. So let's start with decantation. So in decantation, it is used to separate insoluble solid liquid mixtures, just like we have explained previously. So our solid here is insoluble in the liquid or our solvent, our solute is insoluble in the solvent. So for example, an example of a insoluble solid liquid mixture is sand and water, just like we gave an example previously. So you're going to put these two mixtures in a beaker and then you're going to add water and then you stir the mixture. What happens, you give it a few minutes to settle down. After giving it a minute to settle down at the bottom, and then you are the liquid or uh, the water in this case is poured off slowly or carefully like you can see in another beaker and then leaving behind the solid. So this is how the process of decantation occurs. It requires you to um, allow the solution to settle or the mixture to settle before you start pouring out the liquid. So this method has its own disadvantage in that sometimes when you are decanting, some of the solutes may uh, be uh, decanted or it might go into the beaker. It is not very efficient because some of the solids may come along with the liquid when you are pouring, especially if you are not that careful. So we usually use filtration method as an alternative to this method. So let's go, let's look at filtration. So filtration is a separation of an insoluble solid from an heterogeneous mixture, in this case uh, from a solvent, and our example was water and sand. So we are removing sand from the wa uh, muddy water or the solution that has formed from the mixture. 
And then uh, in filtration, you usually use something referred to as a filter paper. So when you are pouring the water, the mixture on the filter paper, some of the solid might be left on the filter paper. We refer to them as residue. And then the liquid that passes the filter paper is called a filtrate. A common example of this uh, process is when we are filtering tea leaves from tea when we are cooking tea. So the tea leaves are left in the filter paper and then the tea, which is the solution, passes through the, the filter and then uh, we are able to collect and drink that. So, so in our case here, this is the procedure or the experiment. You can see the beaker containing the mixture is poured on a filter paper. And then on the filter paper, we said some particles are left. In this case, it will be our, the sand. And then the, the water that is um, left after the sand is removed is the one that passes through and is the one that we collect as the filtrate. So it is important for you to be able to identify the filtrate and also to identify the residue when you are explaining in your exam. So it needs to be very specific. So this procedure has an advantage because the solid particles do not get an opportunity to pass through. So you collect a better or a cleaner um, amount of solvent in comparison to decantation where some of the solid particles might fall, might fall through uh, while you are trying to remove the liquid. So this one is a bit more efficient in comparison Although the water still needs to go through other processes to enable it to be used for different purposes. Filtration is mainly widely used. Uh, later on, we're going to see some of the applications of this filtration method. So one of the application is the filtration of domestic water. As I said before, the water that is um, acquired through filtration is not always clean for it cannot be used for drinking or cooking. It needs to undergo other processes that makes it uh, safe for the human consumption. Although filtration allows the solid particles or the big particles to be removed um, and therefore even gives it an opportunity to undergo the other processes. It also is used for the extraction of medical substances from plants and also it is used for extraction of sugar from sugar cane uh, in sugar cane industries and, and it's also used in, it is the operation that occurs in vacuum cleaning and finally it is used in fuel filters in automobile engines. Filtration is a very widely used uh, process although it always uh, is used together with other processes even in those uh, processes. So let's look at one question explain how a mixture containing sand iron filings and anhydrous iron 3 chloride can be separated so when you look at this question you have been told to explain meaning there is a procedure required and what procedure is required how do we remove sand from this mixture how do we remove iron filings from this mixture and how do we remove anhydrous iron 3 chloride from this mixture so remember when we were discussing the introduction bit of mixtures we said the first method was remove solid solid mixtures and our solid solid mixture in this case had two processes which was use of magnet or sublimation so use of magnet comes uh, before uh, sublimation because in sublimation there is use of heat we do not want to start heating fast because it might interfere with the reaction so the first thing that we are going to do is uh, put a magnet and hover a magnet over the mixture to allow the iron filings to be attracted and then after the iron filings are removed we are left with sand and anhydrous iron 3 chloride we said anhydrous iron 3 chloride forms part of the compounds that sublime when heated. So the next step we are going to do is heat the remaining mixture to uh, um, using uh, and then put a watch glass containing water over the beaker to allow the anhydrous iron 3 chloride to sublime and to be collected as a sublimate.